no dictator, no regime, and no nation should underestimate ever American resolve. The United States, who is the ringleader of the division of our people and the prime obstructor to the reunification, should stop anti-North Korea sanctions. For all of the tension, all of the intense rhetoric and provocative actions, they will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Whatever Trump expected, he will see a response above that. We will control the mentally deranged U.S. doter with fire. The standoff between nuclear North Korea and the rest of the world. There is one place where the U.S. and North Korea see eye to eye, or at least face to face. The demilitarized zone, the DMZ, marking the border between North and South Korea, and the armistice agreement struck to pause the Korean War. I think there's, we always operate at a high level, higher level of tension than, say, the rest of the peninsula, uh, just because it is a um, pretty uh, strategically important um, area. And so uh, based on what's going on outside of uh, our area of operations, uh, nothing really changes for us. We're always ready to um, you know, follow the, the commander's intent of, of what um, the chain of command above us asks us to do. Everyone wants to avoid the worst possible scenario. And so even the propaganda, I, I, I would say, uh, has been uh, pretty minimal and it hasn't been overly uh, tense. Just a few feet from here is North Korea. This is the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. On this side, the South Koreans, the U.S. control. Just a few from, feet from here, the North Koreans. There was a lot of communication between the two for many years. In fact, they had a phone. They'd pick up and they'd answer on the North Korean side. But they stopped answering in 2013. So now, South Korean troops come out every day. They stand here on point. And if there's a message to deliver, they go right to that line, that concrete barrier. That is the line with North Korea. Toes to that concrete, and they yell the message to the North Koreans, at which point they're videotaped. That's the only communication back and forth. From that building, we have a hotline. You can kind of see the wire drucked across uh, to North Korea. It's a ring down phone. Uh, it works. And, you know, we test it four times a day. So basically you pick it up, it rings there. Yes, sir. They're just not answering it right now. We nicknamed it the bat phone because uh, the State Department was up here one time. And I was talking to one of their uh, delegation and I just said bat phone like that. So she went back to Washington, D.C. and sent us the Batman sticker. <laughs> so the bat phone it is. As a matter of fact, we're going to do the midday check right now. So All right. See. No, no answer. No answer this time. I was kind of hoping they would answer for you, although my mom would never let me look it down. <laughs> when they don't answer it, we have to come down here on the border here, as Captain was saying. Uh, we put toes on the border there, and we shout the messages at them. More times than not, they'll come down and video record the message uh, that they're not getting by just answering the phone. <laughs> so it makes sense to somebody in North Korea. It's uh, kind of a strange process, huh? It is, yes, sir. Some of the stuff after six and a half decades, we've reduced it to a very elementary level. And uh, that's just to sustain this place as a place that is open for communication and dialogue. However, there haven't been general officer talks up here since 2009. There haven't been actual staff officer level talks since 2013. In front of you, if you see the border is represented by these white stakes. It's called the MDL or military demarcation line. And you'll notice there's no fences on the border. There are no fences on this de facto border uh, across the entire peninsula. Uh, the only fences are on the southern boundary and northern boundary of the DMZ, uh, which we pass through, of course, coming up here. Um, so really, this is uh, quite an open area. There's nothing keeping, nothing physically keeping um, somebody from just walking across either way. But if you did, you'd probably get shot. It's estimated there are still some two million landmines along the border on the North Korean side. And U.S. commanders say some 70 percent of the North's military is positioned along its southern border, along the DMZ. As we look out over here, I mean, 180 degrees, this is all North Korea. Absolutely. 
Um, the, the way that we're uh, located right now, we're essentially surrounded on three sides uh, by North Korea. So there's the whole JSA, the Joint Security Area, the, um, juts out uh, kind of like a finger into North Korea. And so um, we're under pretty strict uh, observation at all times. Yeah, he hasn't stopped looking at us. <laughs> I don't think he will, sir. Uh, what's the music we hear? That's North Korean propaganda coming from the propaganda village at Gizendol, which is, you may have seen the big flagpole as we headed up here. Yeah. So what is it, a song that we're supposed to like North Korea after we hear it? Or? Absolutely, yeah. The uh, Oddly enough, uh, they both had propaganda broadcasts from either side, and it stopped in 2004. But in 2015, there was a provocative landmine incident up here. And it blew off two of the first rock infantry, devo infantry division soldiers' legs. And ever since then, uh, both sides have been pumping the propaganda again. And it can be lovely music like this, or it can be the, you know, oh, 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 speeches, you know. Mm. And uh, uh, North Korea plays it about 20 hours a day. 20 hours a day. On our side, we do about two or three hours a day. And it could be anything from news broadcast to K-pop. Uh, I stepped out one time. And they were playing Radio Free America, so I stepped out to Bon Jovi. Wow. Unification by Freedom Rock. Well, if you need a Fox News alert, just let us know. <laughs> right on. You got it. <laughs> the sound you hear, well, that's South Korean music. Propaganda essentially being blasted back into North Korea. North Korea right over my shoulder. The mountains in the distance, it's estimated that North Korea has about 1,500 artillery pieces positioned in those mountains, hidden. If the U.S. were to attack North Korea in just seconds, those artillery pieces would be rolled out and they'd fire. Their target, 25 miles this way, Seoul. Video of North Korean artillery tests tells the story. Those 1,500 artillery pieces aimed at Seoul are the main considerations and limitations to even small targeted U.S. military action in North Korea. Which brings us back to the time-honored tension in the DMZ, the arcane maneuvers, the spectacle of both sides bringing tour groups to stare at the opposing country. So they have a tour going on right now, and they're waving at us. Mm -hmm. And so what is that? I mean, like some... There's just a commercial tour. Um, it is very likely uh, made up of... Um, uh, I can see some Westerners there. I can also see some uh, Asian folks, a lot of uh, Chinese visitors. Mm -hmm. uh, they will often have uh, North Koreans come. A lot of times they're party officials and party members. Even American visitors, uh, not associated with the government in the military, prior to September 1st travel ban, uh, American visitors would go over there. In fact, my counterpart over there is called Major Moon, and uh, the kid speaks better English than I do. Is that right? Yeah. I think he had an American teacher. And the blue buildings, built to straddle the border for negotiations that haven't been used for that purpose in more than four years. In February of 2013, North Korea did their third nuclear test. And uh, there was a whole bunch of sanctions laid on them. And so sort of uh, in, in uh, uh, protest. protest to the sanctions, yeah, really, they just, you know, they were very verbose about ripping up the armistice and all the agreements that came after the armistice. When was the last time the North Koreans were in here? Uh, for this meeting, it was May of 2009. Uh, however, the North Koreans are in here uh, every day, five or six days a week with tours. So much like we have in here right now, uh, we lock the north side door and we'll bring visitors into this area. So then if they come down, they lock the south side door and then it's their deal. That's it. Yes, sir. So technically the line right here is is at this table. That's it. Yes, sir. And it'll, you know, you fall it out the windows, you see that concrete block that you were showing, that you were That's mentioning outside. And uh, that has divided the joint security area uh, since right around 1976. I really believe that it makes sense for North Korea to come to the table and to make a deal that's good for the people of North Korea and the people of the world. The threat from North Korea obviously hangs over President Trump's entire trip to Asia. So standing in North Korea, 
We'll be right back with a special report after the break.